We stand with the people of Orlando who have endured a terrible attack on their city. Although it's still early in the investigation, we know enough to say that this was an act of terror and an act of hate. Of hate. What is clear is that he was a person filled with hatred. Over the coming days, we'll uncover why and how this happened, and we will go wherever the facts lead us. Good evening, and as we come on the air this Sunday night, America is just now coming to grips with what unfolded here in the early morning hours here in Orlando, a massacre at a gay nightclub uh, right here behind me. You can see the sign, it's black and white, just over uh, my shoulder here. And at the center of it all, a lone gunman who, in the middle of that massacre, called 911 to pledge allegiance to ISIS. Oh, oh my God. A volley of gunshots in the night, carnage mounting inside, the injured on the ground outside. The gunman, Omar Mateen, was an American born in New York. And tonight we now know he was known to the FBI and yet had bought his weapons in just the past few days. Shalom, shalom, and welcome to Seeking Truth in Torah. I am Yosef Ben Avram, and you have joined us today for this short video that I believe is going to cover a few things that is, I believe, imperative in this current time that we are alive in. And I've entitled it, Don't Lose Your Focus. Um, over the weekend, we know that there has been many things that have been taking place across the world. And one of those things was the bloody massacre in Orlando, Florida, in USA. And I believe that there is so much that we need to have a look at and so much that we need to understand. And um, this channel is not dedicated to news. It's also not dedicated um, to things like this. But I always feel that when Yahweh um, puts something on my heart, that it is so important that we come and we get together and we have a look at it. And I pray that as we get into this teaching today, that you will be able to understand that you and I have been called by Yahweh not to lose our focus. And that so often many believers get so focused on what is going on and they forget that the enemy himself is busy setting the stage, that the world elite is busy setting the stage. And there is a big difference between Yahweh's judgment and Hasatan himself who is trying to play his cards. And we need to see, brothers and sisters, which, what is of Yahweh and what is of the enemy. And we need to be alert and we need to see so that we do not fall into the trap of fear and into the trap of living a life where we don't live on fire for our God. And where we land up being people that are broken hearted, confused, depressed and actually don't move forward with the plan that our Father wants. So I pray that as we get into this teaching that you will come to understand, that you will come to um, allow the spirit and the Ruach of Yahweh to, to make this real to you because if we are not living by the spirit, we will be deceived by the things that we see because brothers and sisters, Satan is a master deceiver and he wants you to believe the lie. So before we start, let's just pray. Father Yahweh, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Father, we thank you that we can get together like this. Father, that we can share the truth. And Father, that you have a message today, Father, for every single person that is tuned in. And Father, I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Father, that their eyes will be opened, Father. That the things of this world and the cloud that the enemy puts upon us, Father, through the media, will be removed from our eyes in the name of Yeshua. That we will see what needs to be seen. And Father, that we will not lose heart in these trying times. We thank you and we bless you. In Messiah Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Now if you don't know as yet, there was a mass shooting in Florida, um, in Orlando, Florida, um, a lone gunman killing over 50 people as I have shown you on the intro video. And it has come to be that ISIS has laid claim to this man working for them. How true that really is, we will never really know. But we know, as I have said in many previous videos, 
where ISIS has originated from and the aim behind ISIS as well as the aim of the world elite within America at this present moment. Now, brothers and sisters, my aim is not to be here to tell you all what is bad. My aim here is to tell you what is right and what is good. So I'd like you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 2. It says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Master Yeshua and how we will be gathered to meet Him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of Yahweh has already begun. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have a spiritual vision, a revelation or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say, for the day will not come until there is a great rebellion against Yahweh and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction, and he will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of Yahweh, claiming that he himself is Yahweh. Now, you know, brothers and sisters, there is no doubt. There is absolutely no doubt, I believe, in your mind or in my mind that you and I are living in very exciting times. But at the same time, it is very trying times indeed. And you know, for many, this time has invoked fear and it invokes panic inside of them. And for others, they are oblivious to what is really happening around them. Why? Because they live within their computers. They live within their cell phones. They live within their own bubble that the world elite is wanting them to live in. That's why they are pushing and pushing and pushing. That's why people are so self-focused. Everything is about me, myself and I. Why? Because if we live in that bubble, we won't really know know what is going on. Take note, brothers and sisters, please take note. Now, you know, as we look at the news, as I showed you before, you know, one cannot help but see that the world is in chaos. And like I said, just this weekend, 50 people were killed by an ISIS attack in a gay bar. And then only hours later as well, brothers and sisters, it was only actually hours later that another terrorist was arrested in another part of USA who had all the things to build a massive bomb. Not only did he have weapons, but he also had the chemicals that would have been used to make a massive bomb. Now on your screen, brothers and sisters, what I find very interesting is this young man that went into this gay club and shot up all these people was carrying an AR-15 rifle. A rifle, brothers and sisters, that is not a small gun at all. I am no conspiracy theorist, but I can put one and one together and I can definitely make two. And when I look at what is going on here, a club, brothers and sisters, clubs have bounces. Clubs have an entrance that is so narrow, yet this man could walk right in with a gun that is so big and no Nobody saw a thing. There's no images, there's no there's nothing that's going on. And they are claiming that it is the second largest attack on American soil ever. First being 9-11, a false flag that the enemy used and that people used to do what? To bring in fear and to bring about the world elite's agenda. So that man would live in fear, so that we would begin to pass different rules, different laws, different laws saying, okay, we need surveillance, we need this, we need that. And what does it do? It places people in fear. Something that Yahweh never wants. Yahweh doesn't want people to live in fear. He wants us to live in freedom. But because man has chosen the enemy, because man has not received the light, man chooses darkness and man falls into the trap that he's walking into. Brothers and sisters, I pray that your eyes will be open to these things. I pray that you will begin to see that these things are happening all around us. Wars, Basically, wars, uprisings, and in other parts of the world is also in chaos, brothers and sisters. It's in total chaos. And you know, the Bible says, what kind of people are you and I to be? What kind of people are we supposed to be? That's the question that I would like to ask you. What is it in this specific time that Yeshua is saying to his children who are truly listening? What is he telling us that we need to hear at this specific time? 
Now, let me begin by saying that I believe that the end is closer than many want to admit. But at the same time, I will state that I do not believe it's the end as so many people are proclaiming so boldly. Why? Because there's so many more events that need to take place. But what this is, brothers and sisters, is another false flag. It's another attempt to get man to pass the laws and the rules that they want so that they can govern you and so that they can bring martial law into the United States and eventually into the entire world now this has all got to happen it has to happen and we need to understand that the bible prophesies according to these things the bible tells us that in the last days these things shall take place and we need to understand brothers and sisters that all these things will happen and we need to understand the events to come and well as as well as our role as children of the light throughout the last days You see, too many are so focused on the doom and they've forgotten about their own spiritual state and their duty to Yeshua. You see, brothers and sisters, what I want to explain to you is we have just celebrated Shavuot, the time of the giving of his Ruach and the time where Yahweh collects the first fruits, where he uses those who have matured and he's going to use them in a powerful way through that open door so that they can proclaim. Don't you think Asata knows this? Don't you think he knows that his time is short? So what is he doing? He's causing chaos upon the earth because it says it in the book of Isaiah that darkness shall cover the earth and darkness shall cover the peoples take note just take a little bit of a look upon the earth and have a look in the news on a daily basis just five or ten minutes and you'll come to see how much chaos is happening people hacking their family members to death, people shooting one another, people doing crazy things, brothers and sisters. Why? Because the devil knows that his time is short. And he knows that the saints are about to rise up. Don't lose your focus. Brothers and sisters, we are to pray for those that are suffering We are to pray that the eyes of our hearts will be open. But at the same time, we are to learn to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And we need to learn to redeem the time for the days are evil. You know, so many people claim to be saved, yet they don't even actually know what it means to be saved. Brethren, the Bible is very clear about the events leading up to the return of Yeshua and what will happen to the world. The Bible says that they will know the power of his great name and they will have to choose if they want to accept the fact that he is the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. This escalation is something that has to happen. It has to happen to pave the way for the coming Messiah. You know, as I've been praying over the last few weeks about my own situation, The Father has been speaking to me tremendously about the days ahead. And you know, fear is crippling the army of the saints. And this is the plan of the enemy. He does this. He brings fear into the world. He brings fear into the lives of people. You see, every person, brothers and sisters, that doesn't love the truth will fall susceptible to the fear. And what does that call? It calls hatred. It calls for for people to begin to hate one another. Right now what's happening is the lesbian, gay and bisexual, transgender community, they will be the ones in the forefront. And what does it do? It plays upon each other. Like I showed you in the opening video, President Barack Obama himself saying hatred. So what does it do? It causes people to begin to to hear the truth in a twisted way and they begin to hate one another. And then the government steps in and acts like the hero. You know, too many are afraid to begin to wage war, spiritual war, the war that is truly needed in the spiritual realm. Instead, they are sitting, watching, speaking and looking on when they should be down on their knees, praying and asking Abba Father what they can do to redeem the time that they are in. You know, I've written and I've taught on the final remnant. It's something that's close to my heart and I continue to speak about it. For I know that as the enemy begins to place a smoke screen in front of the children of Yeshua, there will be others who will see past this and they will begin to rise up in this end time so powerfully and they will advance the kingdom of Yeshua like we have never seen before. 
You know, there is a time for the saints before the end, no matter what theology you have. And we need to understand that before the anti-Messiah has his turn to cause havoc on this earth, the children of the king have a duty and a task to show him to the nations and to call forth those who are sleeping to arise and prepare for spiritual war. The truth is, these warriors are already beginning to do this and I believe that they are doing it under the radar, so to say, as I have said over and over in previous teachings. And they are the ones who will give hope to the hopeless through the power of Yeshua and an intimate relationship with Him. They're not going to be just sitting behind their computer saying, oh, woe is me, look at this, look at that, talking about all the bad. No, they will be busy doing something about what's going on, revealing the truth. You know, while war is going to be raging on in the world, I believe that our Father will take these servants from place to place to declare the word of Yahweh. And they are the ones that, as I have said before, that have been tried in the fire of life and tested in the trials of life, knowing His voice and His grace. You know, many wonder and look upon people they know who have been enduring great suffering in the past few months. And many look at leaders they once listened to and cast judgment when they hear of things that they are going through. But do not be fooled, for not every one of them are in trouble. Could it be that Yeshua is actually tempering his children for the battle that is about to come? The battle for the hearts of men and women and the call to the body of believers to make a difference before the end comes. Brothers and sisters, let's be real. You know, the enemy is hard at work to make people believe his lies. That's what he does. He wants you to believe a lie. He wants you to believe that the end is already here so that you sit back and do nothing about what is going on. You know, there's so much that's going out upon the news from the Mandela effect junk that I hear on the internet to all the other things that are going on. And you know, I find it so strange when I hear this whole idea about the Mandela effect, especially coming from South Africa. Brothers and sisters, when people begin to question the validity of the scriptures, of the infallible word of God, you need to chuck it out. You need to throw it away. Why? Because it's all there to cause you to look to other things and not focus on what Yeshua wants you to focus on. You know, we need to always be alert and come to a point where we are rooted in what we believe, not tossed around by every wind of doctrine. We need to always be alert and come to that point where we are so rooted in Messiah Yeshua. You know, the Bible has stood the test of time for millions of years. And we need to realize that what is from Abba and what is from the enemy. We need to make that conscious decision that we can see what is coming from God and what is coming from the enemy. Unfortunately, today, many people can't make that distinction because they are not walking by the Spirit of God. They're walking by what they read on the internet. We need to understand. We need to understand that Yahweh is doing something new. But why do we get so focused on the distractions when we should actually be focusing on the kingdom of light and the work that needs to be done in that very kingdom? Brothers and sisters, things are going to get worse all over the world, world, everywhere, both in America, South Africa, Europe, and the rest of the entire world. Because Isaiah speaks about it, and I've said it before, how dark it will become because man chose the darkness over the light. And the world elite, brothers and sisters, you can see it. Just just take off the blinkers and have a look. The world elite are setting the stage for the final showdown. But we need to understand that our God is not a created being like Satan. Our God is all-powerful. He is the supreme God. And he will lead his children to victory. But you know, right now, the war is raging in the hearts and minds of believers. I said many times before that I feel we need to regroup under one common banner, and that is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. You know, there will be a second book of Acts in these final days, and while many will be looking at the news and to the television, there will be others in the battleground winning souls and strengthening the body of Messiah for the final days. 
You know, I'm tired of people sending out emails about the last days, but never about the king's mandate. They always want to tell you about the doom to come, but never of the hope that is waiting those who live in the light and serve Yeshua in righteousness. Let us not be of those who cry out, woe is me. Let us rather be of those who say, I am ready, I am willing, and I am going to do all that is required of me, no matter the cost. You know, a few months ago, I posted a teaching about the coming civil war in America. And brothers and sisters, I believe with all my heart this will happen, as it needs to. But those who are secure in Yeshua will not be shaken. There will come a time of peace. A false peace. And will come and the man of lawlessness shall be revealed. Why? Because the scriptures say this. But until that time, brothers and sisters, you and I are to live in the light. And we are to preach the word of Yeshua with boldness and faith. You know, James says, if you lack anything, if you, if you, if you lack anything, you need to ask for it. And you know, many of you listening to this lack faith. And it's time that you ask the king to build up your faith in him. Because you're going to need it in the last days. Others of you lack motivation to get on your knees and pray. Don't wait until things are ripped out under your feet to begin praying. Pray now and trust him for he has those whom I love. He says, there are those that I love. And the ones that I love, Yeshua says, he shall protect. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33 says, But whoso hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You know, brothers and sisters, when all the brooks were dry, Yahweh provided one for Elijah to drink from. Not only did he provide him with a brook, but he sustained him from the table of Ahab through Obadiah. And this is our hope if we walk in the light. And in the instructions of Yahweh, not only his Torah, it mustn't only just be the Torah, but we must listen to the voice of Yeshua when he tells you to step to the left or to the right. Don't go to that place because it's dangerous. Pack your bags, it's time to leave. How will you know that if you don't have an intimate relationship with God? Brothers and sisters, he will sustain us. And he will nurture us if we do not lose focus. We need to be people of prayer and people of hope, people of great action. Let us not focus on the bad only, but use the time we have right now to pray for things and to be a witness to others of the things to come. When the world falters, when the world falters, if we remain in him, he will provide a brook of hope and a table of mercy. You know, we need to evaluate our stance on things and ask ourselves, am I in a place where I'm doing what the Spirit of Yahweh is requiring of me? Or have I become an onlooker who sees and does nothing to maintain my Father's kingdom? Every able body in the last days is required, brothers and sisters, to maintain His kingdom and to not focus on the end, but on the present. That's why it says, redeem the time today, for he has given it to us to redeem, because why? We are living in evil days. Ephesians 5 verse 15 says, see then that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. We need to remember that our Satan knows his time is short. And he will do all that he can to get the children of light to slip up and to return to the darkness. He will attack those who are on the front line and he will continue to keep the rest in a state of apathy as well as in a state of fear. You see, his job is to cause you to be so busy focusing on the bad in this world that you forget about the good as well as the good of Yeshua and the duty that you have to him. Don't lose your focus. Brothers and sisters, Yeshua is the mark. Nothing more, nothing less. He's the one who can guide us through the toughest of times and darkest of days. When the Israelites provoked Yahweh by their continued idolatry, he punished them by withholding both dew and rain, so that their land was visited by sore famine. But while he did this, he took care of his own chosen people. 
That's why we need to be working out our salvation with fear and holy reverence, not getting caught up in the distractions of the enemy and the fear that he is wanting to place upon each one of you. Remember, like I said, that you and I have just celebrated Shavuot and the enemy knows that Yeshua's children are being prepared. He knows that many of you have just been filled to the brim with the power that can change lives. And he will not stop. He will try all he can to flex his muscles. But we all know that in the end, he will be totally defeated. Now is the time for you to make sure that you are in the right place. That your life is in the right place. That your heart is secure. And that your salvation is real. You need to rid yourselves of the things that keep you busy. And get busy with the Father's business of hearing his heart for your life. Chaos is coming. Chaos is coming. Why? Because the enemy wants it to happen. It is coming. And it will cause the unrooted to be uprooted and thrown away. It will shake the faith of those who are lukewarm. And it will cause many to lose hope. Where will you be in all this? Will you be rooted? Will you be strong? Will you be a light and a pillar of hope to the nations? Brothers and sisters, the stage is set to cause racial tension. That's what they want. Racial tension. Hatred of Christians. Hatred of Jews. People hating Islam and vice versa. Hatred of those who are gay. Hatred of those who stand for peace. They want people to hate one another. Their plan is to cause people to hate one another and ultimately then destroy themselves. Brothers and sisters, you and I need to learn to stay pure. We need to stay focused. That's why let your focus be on Yeshua always. Always looking to the author and perfecter of your faith. For He alone knows what is coming. He alone knows what you were created for. And He alone can give you the peace, the shalom that far surpasses all understanding. He who is in Him will know what lies ahead. They will know that the door is open and the time is now to proclaim the word of God. And they will do it despite the fear, despite the false flags, despite all the things that the governments will try to do in the name of the devil himself, if I have to say it like that. They will be strong and they will overcome. My prayer for you today is that you will be one of those who look to Yeshua and never lose their focus. Let's pray. Father Yahweh, we give you all the praise. Father, we want to bless you tonight and we want to thank you that Yahweh, that you are such a faithful God. Father, that you said in your word that he who started the good work in us is faithful and just to bring it to completion. Father, we want to pray tonight that the eyes of every single person that is tuned into this teaching shall be open. Father, that they shall not walk around in darkness, that they shall not walk around in the things that the media places upon them, but Father, that their minds and their hearts and their spirits, Father, will be lifted in the name of Yeshua. And Father, that they will see what is going on in this world for what it really is and father that they will draw closer to you that they will allow their salvation to become real in their lives and father that they will lean upon you and not upon the arm of flesh father we pray in yeshua's name that he who started that good work yahweh you said that you will bring it to completion and i pray for that tonight in the name of yeshua father i pray that every single person father shall look to you and yahweh that their spiritual goggles will be on and that they will be able to see the truth father of what is happening in the world that they will not lose focus that they will not lose hope but father that their hope will be secure in you you are the anchor of their lives and we thank you father we thank you for this teaching we thank you father that it's a teaching that brings hope to the hopeless and father we pray in the name of yeshua i want to pray father for my brothers and sisters that live in the United States. Father, I pray for every single one of them. Father, that they will be lifted up, that they will know the word of God in their hearts, Yahweh. And Father, that you will lead them and guide them. Father, that just as you protected your servants in Goshen, that you shall protect your servants in this wicked generation. Father, we pray a blessing over them. And we pray, Yahweh, that in that nation, that great men and women will rise up for your kingdom. 
Father, we pray for every other person too, including us here in South Africa, those in Europe, those in South America, those, Father, in Africa, those in Australia, those in New Zealand, those in Russia, Father, and those in the other parts of every single part of the world. We pray, Yahweh, that the saints of God will arise in the name of Yeshua and that nothing, Father, shall stop them, but that they shall march on and that they will go valiantly, Father, into the enemy's camp and, Father, that they shall destroy the works of darkness in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, we bless you and we thank you and we give you all the praise in Messiah Yeshua's name. I want to thank you for joining me on this short, short, short teaching. Um, I also pray that Yahweh will bless you and keep you and make his glorious face to shine upon you. I thank you for joining us. I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Um, you can subscribe at the bottom by hitting the subscribe button. Come and join us on www.seekingtruthintorahministry.com where you can get all our teachings and where you can see more about the ministry. We also invite you on a weekly basis to join us on the Sunday evening at 8 p.m. South African Standard Time where we live broadcast our podcast called Coffee Break Hour. Myself and my wife, Aaliyah, would love you to join us where we just share from our hearts what Yahweh is telling us and saying to us for that specific week. I thank you for joining us and may you be blessed in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.